Hey everyone, so why are cryptos down today? What's going on with the market? You know, what's the reason they're falling? It's really been a pattern here over the past, well, it's been 157 straight days. Things have been trading kind of sideways, up, down, up, down, but there's been quite a bit of down. So let's take a look and see what's going on right now in this market. So Bitcoin has plunged more than 10% since hitting 70,000, you know, just 72 hours ago. Um, there was a lot of positive energy in there at that point. And then, uh, one of the things that may have caused this, uh, let's see if we do find this here is, is feelings of, um, Trump and the presidency, um, winning, you know, he's been favored by 70 some percent. It was 80 some percent right after he was the attempted assassination attempt. Um, and since then it's dropped down as the operation mockingbird you know created by the cia pushing kamala harris operation mockingbird was a program created by the cia and now you know it's been utilized for years and years and years pushing um the same state and same words same language trying to make it kamala seem really good um and you know she was absolutely hated and detested by Democrats when she couldn't even get 1% of her vote in her own primary and dropped out in uh, December 2019, didn't even make it to 2020 for the election. So she is not somebody that's thought of very highly. She's not a very intelligent person. She's you know, no, pretty much known to have slept her way to the top. So why is she gaining momentum? Well, Operation Mockingbird is one thing that Democrats are really pushing at. We all know that Democrats hate cryptos or anti-cryptos because they're freedom oriented. And uh, cryptos give you freedom and Democrats don't like people having freedom. They only like having freedom for one thing, freedom to have abortions, freedom to commit crimes, freedom to break the laws. That's all they want you have freedoms to do. Otherwise, they wouldn't tell you exactly how to think and what to do. And that is what is affecting cryptos right now in a negative light because people that the more chance people think, you know, Kamala's or right now Donald Trump's favored by 60% in the voting and not in the voting, in the um, betting poll. And the betting is what I would follow. These polls are going to be worthless. You know, he's up in the poll still, but they're still to me worthless. You can just throw them out. People don't do them right. They're the small little groups of people are doing. They pick mostly Democrats for these ones that are, you know, by the whether it's a Wall Street Journal or whether it's New York um, Post or Washington Times or you know, New York Slimes. Um, all these things, they do the same thing. So you can't even look at the polls. Just get sentiment from people online, whether it's TikTok, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook. That's a better uh feel of what people are actually thinking out there. And a lot of people won't let you know what they're thinking as well, obviously. Um, but that's what's going on with the markets. That seems to be what's pushing Bitcoin down lower. And look, if you go to historically look at um, what has caused Bitcoin to um, go up after the halving and what the time frame was, you know, it was always a lag if, it, if the halving was in April. So let's go back to the last halving of 2020. And really, the market didn't start going up until the very end of August. Really, was more late September. You saw little pushes up in August. You saw pushes up in July. You saw pushes up before, but it was always crash, push, crash, push, crash, push, crash. We're following the same um, pattern. And then really in late um, September, it really started to go up. October, November, skyrocketing into December before Bitcoin crashed. And then the altcoins had their blow off top, which went in in January of 2020 um one and actually 2017 actually going back to the even uh the the market prior to that 2017 and 2018 and then 2020 and the 2021 here we got 2024 going in 2025. so these cycles tend to rhyme they don't necessarily repeat but i expect a similar thing around election time we should see them going crazy especially if there's news out that shows favorability towards Trump or if Kamala Harris comes out crypto, more crypto friendly, which she probably will fake and pretend like she is, but she won't be. Um, the Democrats are not crypto friendly. They are not freedom friendly. They want to take all your freedoms away. Unfortunately, they are the Communist Party in charge. So just my thought, and I don't think much of the Repub Republicans either because they're a bunch of do nothings and uh, they don't get anything done. There's got to be more libertarians like myself out there that 
just get frustrated and um, sick of seeing the same old system, same old things go with endless wars that mean nothing. Again, that's it. Sorry, going on a rant on other stuff, but all these things affect crypto. Another thing that's affecting Bitcoin is the um, record 18.3 million in net outflows of the ETF. And I think it was mostly by Grayscale. Uh, you have Black Rocks and Grayscales. Um, they had some losses and they, they were moving, um, they were selling Bitcoins. So these outflows also hurt. Also, remember, we're coming off the Mt. Gox um, sales of the, of the Bitcoin. Same with um, Germany selling a bunch in the U.S. Then the U.S. supposedly stopped. But now that um, Donald Trump at the Bitcoin conference said that he's in favor of basically having Bitcoin as a, a form of reserve against the currency. Then you see the government that we have in there now say they want to sell. Of course, that's what they would want to do. Not very intelligent people running the show right now. Um, they will regret that, I'm sure. But you know, everything's political right now. But those are some of the things that are driving um, the the markets. And when you look at these things now, spot spot e Ethereum ETF has done pretty well. It's flipped positive after a 34 million dollar inflow and in, uh, yesterday, July 30th. So that's a big positive. So we're going to see more inflow from there, which is going to help stabilize Ethereum. Um, I do think that, you know, Bitcoin is going to, once it gets past that 70K, it's going to run, but it might try two or three, four times before it gets through that 70K. That's a, that's a tough uh, ceiling right now for it to go through. Once it gets through, it's going to break through and it'll break through, break the bears and it'll be back to a strong bull at that point where you'll probably looking at a hundred and anywhere from 90 to 105,000 by early October, call it late September, early October. That's where it should push. Unless we get black swan events that push things back again, you know, another assassination attempt or the war obviously in the middle East is really um, starting to escalate a lot of things going on there with um, killing the Hamas leader in, I think it was in Tehran. Um, there's all kinds of chaos going on, of course, still Russia um, and Ukraine fighting as well. And that's going to continue as we waste more money spending it over there when we need money here. But hey, that is what it is. But let's look at another interesting um, one I have here. Crypto bubbles. I love this. Right. And this was all red not long ago, just a couple hours ago. And now we actually have some things like Avi popping up 5.1 percent um, helium. Tia and Popcat and I, I don't even know who some of these things are, but they're improving. A lot of these were negative 10, 15% down. So you do have recovery right now as Bitcoin recovers. Bitcoin had dropped down to 62, um, 272, and now it's recovering and, you know, getting close back to 64,000. As a matter of fact, it's crossed 64,000. It's recovering nicely now. It's up, moving pretty quickly up to 64, almost six. So it's increased 600 since I've started this um, recording. So that's that's a positive right there. So things are heading back in the right direction. But I, I do feel we're going to uh, struggle to get past that 70,000 at this point. It's going to take a little while, but it will once it breaks through and uh, gets past that, it's going to run again. And the alts have been absolutely hammered. They did hit their low. We think that they were hit their low about three, three or four weeks ago. Um, but they've been hit again pretty good here so when bitcoin turns goes positive when it gets to or near that one hundred thousand dollar mark i think you're going to see all coins really running especially october november december potentially in the next year look really look for that october november december time frame that's when they're probably going to really start running and that's where you're going to get major returns. That's where people right now, the, the Bitcoin dominance is extremely high, which is um, measured against all the altcoins, right? So once the altcoins start making a run, Bitcoin dominance is going to come back down. Um, Ethereum, like I said, is, is solid right now because of that ETF that's been that's going to help it here. It's going to help it in a near run. Solana is staying strong. And then we have our stable coin, Toncoin. That Toncoin just keeps on going. Super impressive. You know, it's a Telegram platform. They're doing all kinds of great things. Super bullish on it. I'm going to be buying some more of that today, as a matter of fact. 
um because i am very very bullish on ton there was some bad noise uh, bad news on the cosmos blockchain over the past day or so here with some hacking on some you know the, the blockchain is huge cosmos blockchain is phenomenal but there's going to be issues when you have enough um other cryptos building on their platform there's going to be things that happen but don't let that fool you cosmos is a good long-term one i really do like it i'm very bullish on it long term um so it's looking solid for the future despite that so buy it while it's down because what is it right now it's about 572 that's a pretty darn good price uh to be, to be picking up cosmos on ethereum is around 3157 and bitcoin cash has been solid at 411 so pretty interesting is going on here now let's look at um and not this one we were kind of very touched on that let's just look at the the market cap right now look at what everything's doing here and you look over the past seven days you see bitcoin trending downward of course everything is going to follow bitcoin and Ethereum's almost followed it to a T if you look at it here. And most of them will. But Solana's been strong. Solana is going to be the winner here. This thing could reach near $1,000, this this market, and it, that before this market ends in uh, this cycle. So I'm still bullish on it, still own it. Bought some, sold some, took some profits, bought some more. I really like it. And uh, they're just doing so much with it right now. Another one. It's kind of under the radar that people don't realize. Um, I didn't realize Ton had gone all the way up to number eight. That's pretty impressive. Doge will have a nice run here as well. Um, Polkadot. Polkadot's got some stuff going on. It's it's going to continue to grow. Cardano as well. Um, so look at those. Th those are going to be strong ones. Cardano is number 10. But there's things that's going on in Cardano. Remember, with Cardano, it is what Charles Haskins did. He's a grow slow guy. He is not trying to push and force things quickly like Solana is. Take it off and credit to them. They got a ton of great developers. They've done a phenomenal job. They took some hits. They've been hacked. Whereas Cardano has not had those issues, but they also have not had that growth. So that being said, I still see tremendous growth from Cardano. Another thing we're seeing is great movement from XRP right now, too. XRP has stayed really solid. That is really acting as a stable coin. It's been 50, it's called 58, 57 cents to 64 over the past week or so. And when everything's crashing, it's not. It's doing pretty well. I, there's some good news, I'm sure, about to come out here, probably on this settlement um, with the SEC as far as what the fine will be. And then I expect it to continue to rip like it did last time off the other news. XRP is something not to be buying. I just bought some this past week. I'm going to probably be buying some more of it coming up here. Um, so things are looking good from that perspective, these different projects, but just know the time frame as to what's going on here with these different um, cryptos. It, it's just not here yet. We're not at that September time frame where things are going to really start running. The excitement's going to come in. Retail's going to be coming flying in everywhere. We're also going to have a lot of chaos. I mean, the two-year treasury bond, I saw that crashed, the 10 years crashing. Um, so there's things going on behind the scenes that we're really not privy to, that we have to really do some deep research on and, and see what's causing these things. But a lot of it's going to be um, politi politically based. Some of it's going to be what's going on with these wars and potential wars and ramping up of wars. Um, all these different things are going to play factors and wreak havoc on all the markets, the stock market, the crypto market, real estate, et cetera. Uh, the good thing is, good news is for real estate is that with the with the um, 10 year T-bond was that comes down, you're going to see mortgage rates really, really, really improve a bit here. Um, and, and they already have over the past week, but we may see some really nice drops here in mortgage, which will spur the housing market at the time of year when the housing market doesn't usually get spurred. Right now, it's normally the slowest time of year. But if rates drop, suddenly you're in the sixes or in the fives, then you're going to have maybe eight, 10 million more potential buyers out there in real estate markets. So some good things potentially could happen with real estate there. But understand, commercial real estate is really under fire right now. These smaller banks and these mid-sized banks are struggling with those all the retail they have with all of the um, office space that they own or they have um, 
mortgages on. So there's a lot going on there. I expect more, much more havoc and much more bank failures going on, which will have a ripple effect there, but it's going to not hit the residential so much. It's really going to be that commercial that you see. And it is much harder. Like I'm a big real estate investor and anything over four units, it's really hard to get financing on or at least good financing on without big prepayment penalties and higher rates and lower LTVs on it. Um, loan to total value is what LTV is. You know, instead of going to 75 or 80 percent, which you can on most residential, you're going to be 65, 70. It's harder to get that 70, 75 percent LTV on those. So that, that market's being affected. Single family has been fine. We're seeing um, Airbnb get hit pretty good. Um, VRBO, Evolve, these companies that are in these vacation rentals because people just don't have the money right now. Inflation has been running pretty crazy. And with that, you know, they try to tamp down, say the numbers aren't as bad, but we see inflation real with gas, with food prices and all these different things. Whenever you go buy, try to go buy um, wiring right now, electrical wiring, how expensive it is because copper. Um, so we have lots going on with that. Lots more turmoil to come, but we have um, a potential great run coming up here. Start September going into 2025 with cryptos. Be ready for that. Be ready to cash out with that as well. It's going to be hard to do some of these exchanges when things get volatile. So you might need a firm like Caleb and Brown um, out of Australia to sell because they're over the counter and their transactions will go through quicker. Costs more money for sure. Um, but it could be worthwhile if your order fills or your order is sold compared to crashing through it, right? You'd rather have it and pay a little extra than not have that happen. So remember to take your profits when you're making good profits, have price points set up, preset those and be prepared because it's going to be, it's going to, we're going to get in a FOMO season come here, September, October, November, and it's going to be exciting times, but you got to remember to stay disciplined. That's how you make your money. And don't make the mistake I made last time when I got a ton of theta, turned up Bitcoin into a bunch of theta and theta fuel. And within a week, they were skyrocketing. And I had about a $489,000 profit. I didn't take profit. I should have. I should have taken profit at that point. But hey, learn from my mistakes. I'll be teaching you and trying to tell you what not to do as the market heats up. And um, get ready for those exciting times. And guys, we will catch you on the next video.